Hello, in this video we're going to take a look at the timers and clocks asset from the Unity Asset Store. It's currently 1246 in 3 seconds, and we could see that time value reflected in the primary clock in the center of the screen. This clock has a script on it, and if we adjust the system time hour offset, we can see that we could actually adjust it for different time zones if we like. So the way that this works is it's just a 3D prefab that gets dropped into the scene. And we could scale, we could rotate, or we can move this object wherever we want. We can also change out the different pieces on the object with different meshes, so you could customize the way that it looks. Let's go ahead and take a look at a new scene and drop the 3D analog clock prefab into it. I'll bring this clock closer to the camera so we can actually see it. And then I'll press play. And now we have our clock in the scene displaying the system time. Pretty simple. Next I'll open the UI clock demo scene. And this is basically the same as the 3D clock except it's on a UI canvas. So if I go to scene view we can take a look at the canvas. And the same exists for this. We can change out the sprites for custom sprites and move it and recolor it however you like. It's a pretty, pretty simple clock prefab. So there's a 3D version and a UI version. If we want to create that from scratch, we'll just create a UI canvas and drag and drop the UI analog clock onto the canvas. Press play and we have a UI analog clock on a canvas using system time. The final scene is a timer demo. So in this final demo scene, we're just going to take a look at the timer, which is a little bit more complex than the previous two scenes. There's some PDF documentation included that will describe these different prefabs. For the most part, it's going to explain the same thing that I'm explaining, but it's in text form. Let's just go ahead and select the timer and press play. The timer state is currently set to counting. We could also set it to disabled at any time to stop the timer. I'll reset it back to counting. The timer type is set to count down. We could change that to count up or count up infinite. The start time was set to 20 seconds. You can specify any value you like. And this asset is using a double value type to keep track of time. So you're not gonna run into floating point precision errors. And you could also adjust the timer speed if you like. So now that the timer's reached zero, let's change some of these parameters a little bit. Um, we'll set it to count up now, and we'll leave the finish time at 20 seconds. But some of this other information we don't need, so we're going to format the timer. We'll disable days and hours and minutes. While we're at it, we might as well disable milliseconds. That way we only have seconds being displayed. And I don't like that there's a double zero, so I built in an option to disable the leading zero. So we'll toggle that leading zero off for seconds. And now we'll set the timer to counting. And now we have a single digit value type when the second digit is not required. So there's no need to draw zero in front of that. Now that it's reached 10, the, the full value is still shown. And if we wanted to, we could turn any of those other options back on. And that's basically how the timer works. So the next thing that was recently added was the, the max value that you can set for a timer. Previously, we were using floats, and that basically limited the the highest value time. So the last feature that we'll take a look at is playing with the max value of the timer. So the highest value that we can set for the timer is now what I just inputted. You can actually see it in the inspector, it's displayed. The limit is 10,675,199 days. So I'll just set that timer back to counting and press play. And now we can see we have a very large timer that's actually counting down. So previously with the float value, this 
this value uh, for the timer would not have been achievable. So the asset was rewritten to support the double value type, which lets us get extremely high values. And probably the most useful scenario for having such a high timer value would be if you're keeping track of game time. So let's change the timer to count up infinite. And when we press play, it's gonna start at zero. So I'll unpause it. And now we can have a game timer that will start at zero and you could use this for progression tracking for your game or your project, whatever application you're building. And when we press play again to turn it off, the timer resets though. So what was recently added, I'll go ahead and press play to show you that it starts at zero again, and that would be expected. We've added a save session timer script and this uses player prefs and you assign a save data key to this script and you might want to make this unique for each timer that you assign this to. And what this is going to do is it's going to check the player prefs key, which is what you would assign here, and it's going to assign that value on startup. And there's also a context menu that you could select to delete the key value. So right now if I pause the editor and press play, we'll see the timer starts at zero. We get a debug message. You could turn these on or off. And it says player prefs data last session game timer zero. So there was no value stored in the last session. I'll unpause and now we'll let the timer count up a little bit. I'll pause again. We're at 4.112. Now we'll turn off play mode and we could see that the save session timer script saved the player prefs value. So now if I pause the editor and press play again, when the script starts up, it's gonna load the player prefs data and this time it found that value and it's 4.112. I'll go ahead and unpause. Now it was at eight seconds when I turned off play mode turn it back on and we're counting up again. So at this point we actually have a game timer that's being saved and it can go up to 10,675,199 days, which is more than enough time to track your player's playtime. And at this point, this is the conclusion of the tutorial and the overview. I hope you like it. Thanks for your time. Goodbye.